it was already it? most of it was already there, and the uh, one of the groups in the in, in the U.S. has also released its entire program suite as well about um, a year ago. And, and the issue your vice chancellor raised about um, constraints um, on the there are constraints on some, on some I mean, of the stations withholding of permission. That's the other fact. Yeah, and we have tried to to go back okay. and um, go back to the countries. And seven countries have said they would rather we didn't release the copies of their data we have in our database. Do they give any indication why? I mean, I, I, I realise that's sensitive, perhaps. Um, it's not that sensitive. I mean, Canada, for example, says they would rather we sent requests for Canadian data to their website. They don't want us to put their data on our website. Okay. I'm ju just trying to make some progress. I'm trying to get to you, Evan Harris. That's would it be possible for someone to repeat exactly the things you have done. But it would take years to sort of go back to data that you got in 1990 or even before then and, and begin to do all the comparisons that you've done. Would it be possible for someone to do it from scratch if that's what they wanted to do? It would be possible with the publications to, sorry, to do that. Yeah, but some of the things that you haven't included in the publications, I can understand why not, because it wasn't conventional to do it in your branch of science but someone else could do it from all the information that you've provided. They could approach the Russians, they could approach the Canadians and this sort of thing. It would take a yes. long time to do, but in theory it could be done. Yes, it could be done. Yes, okay. Thank uh, you. Um, Just to explore this assertion that, that this is abnormal. Um, you publish some, you do some work. Let's say you're a bench cell biologist and you do some work and you publish a paper and you send it for peer review. Um, if another group of scientists want to see your workbooks, it's not my experience that you photocopy your workbooks, uh, your lab bench books, and send, send it to them. So I just want to clarify to what extent you're arguing that it's just your, are you saying it's your unit, it wasn't standard practice, it's your field of science, or do you suspect that across the field of science it's unusual to, to, to photocopy and send out all the raw data behind papers? It's unusual in the field of science. Right. So is that it's just in your field? In, in climate science. So in climate science it's unusual, because that's quite an it's important becoming, issue. It's becoming more usual now with, with, with the internet. Yes. But what about, you can't speak for other fields of science, I guess. But would, do you have any idea whether in other fields of science the data is sent out on request? Because in clinical, I in clinical trials I've not seen photocopies of, of even anonymized patient data being sent out on request. But if peer reviewers ask to see the raw data, is, that a di is there a different situation there, or do they never ask for that? Um, we would probably send them that then, but they, but they have never asked for it. Right, but you wouldn't object to sending peer reviewers or editors? Yes, but they have never data. asked. Right, okay, and then, um, um, Okay, well, we'll just move on to, to something else. Um, the, there's this whole hide the decline business I want to... There's this whole hide the decline business I want to talk to you about. There was a concession from at least one set of, of, of critics that the trick is probably not an issue because I think they recognise that that is a, doing a term used. So I think we can... And it may not be the view of every of all of your critics, but at least you have some on the record saying that that's now not the issue. But then you will recall there was an exchange I had, if you were listening, with them about this question of uh, hiding the decline. And I just wanted you to respond to their assertion that when you did that, it was not set out in the publications. And I must say, I haven't gone back to the publications to read them, so I'm relying on your, your view on this, but I'm sure we, it can be done but that in fact it was never shown that this was going on, whereas your evidence from the UEA says very clearly that this is very clearly part of this published scientific record that you were doing it for the reasons you, and the reasons you were doing it, and that can be criticised or agreed with by other scientists. Can you just talk about that? Well, that particular email relates to this, this document that I produced for the World Meteorological Organisation at the end of the last millennium in 1999. And one of the curves we had a, was based on tree ring data, which had a very good relationship between the tree rings and the temperature from the latter part of the 19th century through to 1960. 
and after that was a divergence where the trees didn't go up as much as the, t as the real temperatures had. Now we knew that because we'd written a paper the year before in 1998 in, 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 in the journal Nature which discussed this divergence between tree growth and temperatures in recent times. Now not all tree ring series show that, but this particular one we knew did. And so we knew that putting the tree ring series in from 1960 onwards would be wrong because it doesn't agree with the instrumental temperature. And so we, what, what we did for this simplified diagram was just to put the, instrument, the instrumental data on the end from 1960. So that only applies to one of these curves on this uh, cover. And we'd written about it the year before um, in the, one, of, one of the first papers on the divergence problem. I think we were the group that actually called it the divergence problem. And since then, we've been working on with other um, tree ring data and trying to improve the way we process the data to try and make sure we keep as much of the, the low frequency uh, information on longer time scales in the trees because you have to standardize trees in a certain way to produce uh, temperature reconstructions. So my question is, in subsequent papers when that was done, was it always explicit, albeit only by reference to the nature paper to which you were referring No, it's to. always explicit in the subsequent papers because some of the subsequent papers have improved the, the, the processing techniques. So did you understand what those witnesses, if you heard them, meant when they said that they couldn't see, that they thought that the hiding of the decline approach, which is a label from an email, which isn't, so the, the identifying and dealing with the divergence problem hmm. was itself hidden. You don't accept We that. don't accept it was hidden because right. it was, this was discussed in a paper the year before and we've discussed it in every paper we've written on, on tree rings and climate. While I have you on trees, if I may, an assertion was made by the first panel that all the data on trees before a previous date relates to one pine tree. Okay, can you elucidate whether it's a I'd like to call this the case of the lonesome pine. Is it? <laughs> is it? Is that? Is that a problem from your perspective? No, it's not a problem at all. That particular reconstruction went back to 1400, or just after 1400, and that's because there were insufficient trees to go back before that. And it's much more than just one. So we have criteria to determine how far you can go back in terms of the number of trees you have at a certain number of so sites. So it's not lonesome. No. no, no. Professor Acton, um, I think you've, you've probably read about it. Uh, the speaker in, in, in this place lost his job uh, partly because uh, he seems to think it's more important uh, to pursue people who leaked uh, MPs' expenses uh, rather than deal with the, the issue which seemed to show some problems in the way uh, members had claimed their expenses. Don't you think that your assertions in your submission to this committee are going along the same line as being very concerned with the leaks and then prejudging uh, the outcome of, of the inquiry in, in what you say? I hope not. I mean, the point of setting up an independent inquiry is to hear it and allow it to look absolutely fully into all the matters before it. I want to know the full truth. I'm, I'm surprised you find a, a prejudging here, and I'm concerned. Well, the, the reason I say that, and it's a statement from uh, your, your pro-Vice-Chancellor, Trevor Davis, who argues uh, a, exactly uh, the case that Professor Jones has been arguing, says Professor Jones has no case to, uh, to, to answer in it, the only way you can read your submission to this uh, committee is to say uh, that, that you agree with Professor Jones. And do, do you mean about the climate science? Yes. So no. Ah, well, um, Muir Reese's um, independent uh, review is not looking at the science, it's looking at allegations about malpractice. As for the science itself, I haven't actually seen any evidence of any flaw in the science, but I am hoping later this week to announce the chair of a panel to reassess the science and make sure there's nothing wrong. It is amongst the most thoroughly endorsed and co-witnessed science there is. Professor Jones has 450 co-authors from 100 universities 
from Prince